One Pepperidge Farm person who really did change the world was our founder, Margaret Rudkin. Her remarkable story deserves to be told. She was born Margaret Fogarty in New York City in 1897. She was the, uh, the oldest child of five children in a second generation Irish family. Now she graduated valedictorian of our high school class, but then she went on to spend nine years working in New York, first as a bookkeeper, then a teller, and finally she became the executive secretary to Wall Street broker Henry Rudkin, whom she married in 1923. Fourteen years later, Margaret was a 40-year-old mother of three sons, living in Fairfield, Connecticut, on a beautiful property called Pepperidge Farm, which had been named for the pepperidge trees that grew along the drive. In an unfortunate case of bad timing, the Rudkins had moved into Pepperidge Farm in 1929, the same year as the great stock market crash. The Rudkins faced serious challenges in the 30s. And as parents, one of them was dealing with the severe allergies of their youngest son, Mark. His condition made him unable to eat most commercial foods. Finally, Margaret decided to try baking him some all-natural whole wheat bread. Her son, Mark, loved it. And in fact, he did so well that his doctor actually prescribed the bread to many of his patients. As testimonials to the bread grew, Margaret was inspired to offer it in stores. And to that end, one day she packed some of her loaves in a basket with a butter and a knife and went down to Mercurio's Market in Fairfield Center. Margaret, whose genius as a marketer was already starting to show, responded to the, uh, to the grocer's hesitation by slicing up her savory bread and giving him a taste. In an instant, the sale was hers. Mr. Mercurio took all the loaves that she brought, and by the time she arrived back home, he had left a phone message asking for more. In 1939, just two years after its founding, Pepperidge Farm celebrated the production of its 500,000th loaf of bread. Then just six months later, they celebrated the millionth. The Reader's Digest, which was the People magazine of its day, published an article called Bread Deluxe and told Margaret's story to the world. And then demand for Pepperidge Farm products caught fire. In 1956, Margaret spent a remarkable $200,000 to introduce this down-home delivery man, Titus Moody. And an advertising legend was born. These were happy days for the Rudkins, as Henry was also doing very well. They had a wildly successful bread business, lots of money and fame. The Rudkins are traveling to Europe, which is something they did often at this time. And as you can see, they're going in high style. On a previous visit, to Margaret had been enthralled by a unique collection of very fancy chocolate cookies produced by a company called Delac, bakers to the Belgian royal house. She determined to buy the rights to produce and sell these delicate biscuits under the banner of Pepperidge Farm. And here they are. Soon after, Margaret plunged again, buying a New Hampshire producer of frozen pastry. Say you want old-fashioned, home-baked apple turnovers. You just open up a package of Maggie's new Pepperidge Farm frozen turnovers, pop them in your oven, still frozen, mind you, and watch them rise. So now it's the 1960s. Margaret's in Europe again. This time she's in Switzerland. She discovered a unique little fish-shaped cracker that she sure would be another winning addition for Pepperidge Farm. And of course, the rest is history. Irresistible goldfish crackers took America by storm, and they remain today one of our leading icons. Margaret was now truly world famous. Here, she appears at right next to none other than Eleanor Roosevelt, who reportedly was a huge Pepperidge Farm stuffing fan. In 1961, after a lot of thought, Margaret decided to sell her business to Campbell Soup. Margaret became a member of the Campbell Soup Board, the first woman to serve in that role. Still, the unstoppable Margaret kept on, publishing this, the Pepperidge Farm Cookbook, in 1963. It's a combination of her favorite recipes and memoirs through the years, and it was the first cookbook ever to make the bestseller list of the New York Times. It was now 26 years since Margaret started Pepperidge Farm. She turned a single loaf of bread into a huge, multi-category enterprise. She was a best-selling author, a renowned industry leader, and she frequently lectured at Harvard and other business schools in the US and Europe as well. The fairy tale, as Margaret liked to call Pepperidge Farm, became the passion of her life. I don't believe the brave new world will ever stamp out individual initiative. If you have it, don't smother it. 
Go ahead and try. Do something a little better than it's ever been done before.